That's it. They're over. Um, all right, let's talk more politics now. We were talking with uh, David Bradbury, the Assistant Treasurer, before the news. Ed Husick, Federal Labor MP, joins us now. Ed, good morning, morning to you. Yeah. And Wyatt Roy, Liberal MP. How are you, Wyatt? Good, mate. How are you? Very good. Good to have you both with us. Let's start with the news poll. And you'd be pretty happy, Wyatt. Um, coalition, primary vote, 48%. Well, I, I think what these figures show is that the Australian people have figured the government out. I mean, uh, they figured out what the Labor Party can't seem to understand, which is that you, you can't tax a nation into prosperity. You know, no one is out there in the street saying, just tax me some more. I just need a few more taxes in my life that's yeah. going to make my life easier. So I think that's what these figures reflect. All right. You're falling only slightly short of gloating, actually, there, uh, Wyatt. Um, do you have, I mean, if this whole thing comes apart, if it unravels between the Greens and Labor tomorrow, are you actually ready to govern? Uh, is the coalition ready to govern? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure I haven't heard one policy yet. Well, I, I think we have a very clear plan uh, for Australians. We'll restore hope, reward and opportunity to Australians and we'll govern on liberal principles of uh, giving a hand up instead of a hand out of equal opportunity for all, opportunity okay. as an equaliser of, in our society instead of subsidy and uh, of giving individuals freedom to choose how they live their life. So, and the first month uh, will we have be a really spent clear cancelling vision. things, cancelling carbon Absolutely. tax, cancelling the mining tax. Absolutely. The very first thing we'll do is get rid of the carbon tax because, as I said, you can't tax a nation into prosperity. The Australian people don't want more taxes, they want less taxes. So uh, that will be our priority. And then our second priority or our uh, equally important priority will be uh, getting border security right once again, uh, as we did under the Howard government. Right. And just really, really quickly, how will you pay for border security if you cancel all these taxes? Well, when we were in government, in the last year of the Howard government, only three boats arrived because our policies worked. Uh, and when you have less people arriving, uh, you cheaper. have less expenditure of taxpayer money. That's right. So cancel the carbon tax, cancel the mining tax, cancel the asylum seekers. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, all right. Uh, I'm going to ask you the same question, Ed, only from a slightly different perspective. 31% primary vote. You're dead in the water. Well, the thing with the polls at the moment is if our primary vote goes up as it has and you know we experience a, a sort of a hit on the... Uh, personal popularity stakes, or if it goes vice versa, someone will always pick the the uh, dark edge of the cloud and yep. focus on that. So, from our point of view, it's always been about just getting on with the job of right. trying to get these these are tough reforms. So no did one's... I ask the question the wrong way? I'm sorry, I'll ask it a different way. So Ed, good news. Your primary vote rocketed up one percent to thirty-one. See, if you'd just done that at the start, <laughs> like I'd asked, we'd all be happier. But you know, oh dear. You know, okay, you so have to go and do it your way. Here's another one. So bad news. Gillard's performance is rated now only by twenty-seven percent of respondents as good. And again, if you're trying to actually get things done, you're always going to be copying a hit. And this is the, the thing. It's easy to oppose and it's easy to say, we'll just cancel things and mm. have that wave that magic wand around. That's fine. Um, if you ever want to see a test, ask Tony Abbott to actually spell out an idea for any period of time that's his own, not John Howard's, come up with a policy that he can actually argue in the public domain rather than just fight what we're doing, and you're going to find it's like getting a fish Although, out of fair, water. he doesn't actually need to do it, obviously. I mean, if you look at the polls, they'd be foolish to do any of that well, because you're losing without them doing that. Got to say, in an environment where we've got a minority government and where, as you'd been, you know, sort of putting the scenario forward about what happens if, you've got to be ready. And we haven't seen anything. I mean, I've, you know, other than slogans, we haven't really seen much about what they're actually mm. going to do. Yep. And you've got to govern beyond the, well, beyond that's the moment. Well, true, but as I say, obviously they, don't, stuff. As, uh, obviously they don't need to worry about that because, you know, the, the voters, the only important people in democracy, indicate that they don't seem to care. They just hate you people so much. They want you out. Maybe I'm overstating it. I don't yeah, know. Really? I'm just, I'm just looking at the figures and that's how it comes <laughs> across. Um, Wyatt, if you were advising Labor, um, what would you tell them to do with the Greens? I mean, obviously there is a, there is a rift between the two of them. The Greens have got off scot-free so far and Labor have paid a very high price for it. What should they do? Well, I wouldn't presume to tell the Labor Party what to do other than, you know, lower taxes and get government out of their way. But uh, if they were serious about this, you know, the Labor Party would walk away from the policies that they co-wrote with the Greens, so the mining tax and the carbon tax. Uh, and if the Greens were serious about what they're saying about the Labor Party now, well, they'd walk away from the government because, you know, you've got Sarah Hanson-Young saying the Labor Party stands for nothing, but yet the Greens are keeping yeah, uh, the Labor right. Party in power. Yeah. So, you know, this is a contradiction. And rather than play politics, if they actually mean what they say, walk away from each other and let's go to an election, 
run on what each party stands for. And I get for. the feeling, Ed, that there are many in Labor that hold that view. It is time to actually call it as you see it with the Greens. They are not a viable political party. They are poison to you. Well, my issue with them was particularly in relation to when we're trying to find a solution on asylum seekers. Yep, absolutely. And uh, having a situation where they just conveniently sided for the sake of stopping us trying to reach some sort of agreement. Yeah. Uh, is just that is on. no way for a coalition and partner to behave. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's I think there's a lot of frustration. Loose. There's a lot of frustration. Well, I mean, at the same time, too, I try to seek balance in the way that I deal with people. And insofar as there are some, you know, green MPs that, yep. you know, I've got you know, time for, um, then absolutely you work with people, particularly in the way that the parliament's framed. Okay. We're almost out of time. Just very, very quickly. Wyatt, what did you do with your pay rise? Because <laughs> Ed I gave his charity. Actually, I've just, uh, I've just bought a house, so I'll be going to mortgage payments like oh, everyone else. So I hang on, you spend it on yourself. So you spent yeah, your well, money on yourself. Ed here, let's have another look at Ed, close up of Ed. Ed gave his money to charity. Got to a local organisation, yeah. Well, Does that mean well, you're a nicer well, person a good, than Wyatt? No, no, look, no, I don't think so. And certainly what I made the point yesterday, there were two things I made. One was, um, you know, people make their own minds up about, you know, what they do with their, their money for sure. The other thing is, too, that you would have seen in the article, is I've said, you know, you're never going to have a popular time to raise, you know, politicians' pay, because everyone's going to yeah, yeah. be uptight with it. But um, we do need to have a sort of reasonable debate about, you know, what's the best rate to remunerate MPs. But for me, it was supporting an organisation that I've been helping out for years. Fantastic. Fantastic. Good for you for that. Um, last word has to go to White, really, because at the moment you're coming across as a filthy capitalist. <laughs> Well, I, I kind of think that uh, what people need is politicians that are actually worth the money you pay them. So, you know, if the government's making our life harder, I would really not like to pay them what we're currently paying them. So if politicians are doing a better job, uh, maybe we would uh, not have this debate as much. And this debate will go on until the end of time. But let's actually do our jobs properly and make Australians' lives easier, not harder. And that's what we're supposed to be here to do. So. And congratulations on the new house too, Wyatt. Thank you very much for joining us. Wyatt Thanks, Roy Wyatt. and Ed Husick, always Thank good to you. have you in the studio. Thanks. Thanks he could have come back with his doing his bit for the housing sector. Yep, absolutely. He's spending his money go round, he's investing, he's paying <laughs> lots of taxes, he's buying a house. All right, we are going to